Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do several projects with this, but we're first going to be adding a 24 SBMS to this battery that we got from batteryhookup.com. Link will be in the description along with the discount code, uh, which is the word tech. And so if you want to get it, you know, it helps the channel out, but we're going to add a BMS to this. Uh, this system has two main ports right here on the front. Even comes with this nice big cable that we'll be able to cut in half and use to connect to whatever we're going to drive. It also has a CAN bus system that's probably proprietary to the system. Um, the idea being is that you have a bunch of these, you network them together, and then there's a central hub that manages, you know, the balancing and monitoring and those kinds of things. We won't be using that. Maybe you'll use a piece of it. We'll get into it as we take this apart. But the first step is to get inside of it. And so the only screws I've seen so far are those four uh, that attach this front panel and has this top lid part here. And then two big screws back here, there on that corner, in that corner. Uh, these seems to be a T25, and the ones up there I think are a T20. So pretty common. You should be able to pick those up, no problem. So let me validate that those are the only screws that need, and we'll get this cover off and we'll keep going. All right, I've confirmed all you need is those four screws up here removed and the two in the corner. And that gets the slides right off and we have access to the system. Here's that uh, PCB that's probably their internal battery management system. Uh, there's no contactor in here, so this just probably handles balancing and monitoring. Um, you know, here we've got our, our plus. It goes all the way back here. Uh, this bus bar connects the batteries here. Um, so if you were to measure off of that post down there, that's only 30 volts. If you measure here, that's the full 95. And then our ground bar. This is why we're going to connect the BMS to. So keep an eye on that. Now, I have a theory. I have to check it. I believe these are our, our lead wires that go to the batteries. There's eight here. There's eight here. And there is eight uh, right here. And so it's my belief that these all go to the battery. And so I will be figuring out how to validate that. So I don't want to have to rerun wires to all these systems. I don't really want to take all this plastic off. I just want to use this uh, basically as is. And so that's what we're shooting for. Things I have confirmed is that the, 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 the body is not grounded to the ground. They're isolated. So that helps with some protection. So if you, you know, were to touch one of the positive bars to the to here would not short, uh, but I had always assumed that it would. Just be really careful. This is high current stuff, um, and so very dangerous. So I'm gonna figure out how I can uh, probably take this off and find the wires that start from zero all the way up to 24 and figure out how we can best connect this BMS. All right. All right, I've learned a little bit more. I was able to crack open this to get an idea of the wiring. I think this is all one big piece of plastic. And like I said, I don't want to take this thing totally apart. We may do that down the road when we just kind of split this up into the three 8Ss that make up this system. But I just want to make use this as is. So let me show you what I've learned so far. Uh, I think some of these black wires go to the batteries, but I think they can be ignored. So I think everything we need is on this pin out here. And so far, this far left white one is the, the ultimate positive position. And then as you move down, you get to all the cells. Now, there's more wires here than there are cell groups. So some of them are paired up for some reason. Like these last two are the same, go to the same position in the battery, the eighth, eighth, eighth end of the connection. And so I'll have a diagram once I figure out all these connectors. But since all three of these look the same, I'm assuming they're all the same. But like I said, I'll have a diagram and I'll label out all of them. But so far, I was able to get through all through all eight cell groups um, off of this pin out. And so the idea being is that we can just connect our BMS to this wire here or, you know, this wire here. That way we don't have to, you know, go connect to the batteries directly because taking this all apart to get to them can be a bit of a challenge. All right. So I'm going to keep moving forward. All right, guys, let's discuss a game plan of wiring the BMS. Uh, I have learned that these are the connectors to use. And I don't want to cut this if I don't have to. Obviously, I can make this real easy, but 
I'd rather make a wiring harness. And since two of these cell groups use extensions, I have a female connector or male connector, however you want to look at it, male connector, that I could use. So I could just cut this anywhere and attach all my BMS leads to the corresponding wires. But there's only two of them. The third one actually connected directly to the PCB. And so I've been shopping around and trying to find one of these and I'm not finding any luck yet. Um, but I've got a query into somebody who might know, and so I'm trying to figure that out. Worst case, I can wire those two with harness, and then I can cut this one up, but I really don't want to do that. But also to start laying some stuff out, I'm going to remove this PCB and this support structure, and the BMS is probably going to sit in here because it needs to be close to this uh, where the battery terminates and then the output uh, here. So I'm going to go ahead and work on taking this out. Uh, while I wait to find out some info on these and um, start doing some measurements and start calculations of how the BMS may fit best in here. So I'm going to work on that now. All right, guys, I wanted to check in with you and I didn't want to jump too far ahead before making some notes and stuff you might be helpful for you if you're tearing one of these down. For this uh, plastic that was covering this area that held the original PCB, um, it's kind of retained with this here, this bus bar. And so I didn't, again, I don't want to take too much of this apart. So I left that in. I just took my Dremel and cut that off. You probably could have worked around it, but I like having this nice little flat area that the BMS is going to live. As far as this bracket, which connects the battery to the terminal here, um, I, I learned is that you need to crack this nut first because there's nothing really supporting this back here. Uh, the, the leverage is all going to be on this uh, post on the battery. So crack this one first, and then this one, and then there's enough play in here that you should be able to shimmy this off and then work with it. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet on how to get this ultimately connected because this just is kind of loose in there, and there's nothing to, to hold it. Um, and so I might have to epoxy it or something so that uh, when I make my connections here that there's enough, uh, you know, friction to to make a secure connection because what it was doing is when you would push against this it pushed against the bracket and the bracket was connected to the battery mount which is pretty solid so not 100 percent sure what i'm going to do there yet but uh um next thing we're going to do is you know i'm we'll still try to figure that out i need to probably order some lugs um, that i can attach to the bms uh, wires there and connect to the battery post and then connect to this terminal. Um, and so let me work on that and we'll get back to it. All right, I've made a decision on how I want to handle making this connection to the BMS. Um, I was planning to cut this in half and use this in, but that would only take care of two of those. And I'm a little OCD, so I want to do it the same way in all three. And I still don't want to cut this. And so what I'm going to use is one of these guys here. Uh, see if I can get that in focus. It, uh, I bought this uh, with a big kit of other creating, you know, I think it's called JST connectors or whatnot. But the spacing, I think, is 2.54 millimeters. And so it fits perfectly in there. And so I'm just going to solder those directly to the BMS leads and then insulate it with some glue to make sure there's no shorting going on. And do all three of those. So that's what I'm going to work on next, and I'll show you what's done. And then I will go over and make sure that we understand which of these go to which battery leads. I have figured it out, and I have a diagram. We'll show. We'll put it on the screen. All right, I'm going to work on that. All right, guys, I wanted to check in with you before getting too far along. Kind of show you what's going on here. What I'm doing. I'm soldering the BMS leads directly to these pins, and I'm using this as my layout. And I'm going to put a graphic on the screen for you now to lay out all the pins. Um, but the, the symmetry here is that uh, you'll notice to the far right is a bundle of two reds together. Everywhere you see two colors together, all those pins are connected. So the first two is pin zero, and in the middle there, those two are together, and then the far left, the two white ones together. Also, you'll notice that on the next grouping, that positions uh, the first two on the left is connected to the, the two on the right. So 
their bridge. So theoretically, there's, I mean, literally there's four wires all going to the same position on the battery. Why they're doing it that way, no idea. But uh, if you notice, I'm coming back to my picture now, the pinouts, I'm not using all of uh, the pins. I'm only using the ones I need to give it a little bit of space. And I'm kind of super gluing these leads on so they don't move around and make connectivity. So when the wiring harness is completely done, I'll be able to go in and check to make sure that all my positions are correct by starting with the here and then check each lead to make sure the voltage is increased by about 3.9 because that's what the batteries are currently sitting at. So let me finish this up and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm pretty much finished up on the wiring, but I wanted to show you something on the last set. Um, so the first set, I'm using, you know, eight pins there. And then on the second set, I'm doing the exact same thing. Get this into frame. But the last set, I've copied it as well. But I've also included the last two pins. So basically, you know, this pin right here is 24. And 25, um, you know, it is the last lead of the BMS. And the BMS handles from like 8S to 24S. And so this last lead, these two, if you remember from the diagram, are the same wire. And so I've run both of these to 24 and 25, or actually, if you look on the BMS, it's 20, yes, yeah, 24, and then it's B plus. And so those two are the same wire. I left those in. Uh, that's how the BMS gets power. So if you were to do 20S, you would drop off these last four pins, but you still need to connect the last wire so it knows where it's a completed. BMS circuit. And so last thing to do is to finish up the heat shrink and then do a test to make sure all my wiring is correct. And then we can move on to connecting up the BMS. All right, guys, <clears throat> a quick little update. Uh, we have our BMS here. It's a JK24S BMS. And I went ahead and added on some lugs to both sides. And I've connected the battery side to the battery post there. For this plug, if you remember, that uh, lug was pretty, is just loose in there. Without this bracket attached to the battery, there was no support. So I've just epoxied it and I've, uh, you know, bolted it in. And I'm not going to try to put too much pressure on this. I don't know how much this is going to hold. So I'm going to connect the BMS to, you know, that hole there and use a bolt. And then make sure that I can plug in and out the wire that, that we got, which is, you know, right there. Um, next steps would be, you know, hooking up the BMS wiring and make sure everything turns on and we'll go through that when we get there. And the only other thing I want to include in this video, um, is about charging. Um, what I'm going to, what I've done is added a XT60 connector here. So that's what I'm going to use for charging in and out because once these, uh, terminals have the wire on them, they're going to go straight to an inverter and they're not going to ever come off. And I don't want to run wires off the, those cables. So I'm going to, you know, run a wire, the ground wire over here to this lug, and then a positive wire all the way to the back part where there's a battery terminal right there. And I have room for two. If you remember, the PCB was there, and there were two serial ports for the CAN bus, and so now those are open spaces. So I may put two in there just for auxiliary purposes. Um, and so let me finish that up. So next time we look at it, all the wiring should complete. And then we'll take a look at the BMS. All right, guys, uh, we're finished up with the wiring. Um, try to make it as neat as I could. As you can see here, we've got the BMS connected to the battery and this terminal block here for the ground side. And we've installed the XT60 connector with the ground going over there and the positive going all the way. So this is the farthest ground. This is the farthest positive. So I just and it there. Zip tied my BMS leads. Um, and just a quick note, the BMS leads, you can do this a bunch of ways. You could have took this whole battery apart and run the leads directly to the cells, which would be a lot of extra work. Or you could just cut the wires right at those and just attach them. Um, or you can use the, um, you know, these leads that were included, but like I said before, I only have two of these. Um, and so the third one I was gonna have to cut if I did it that way. 
So I decided just to use these pins and that was probably the most tedious part was soldering the leads to those pins that connect, but it worked perfectly. Um, one other note on this BMS, this is a JK BMS. If that little light is not flashing or on when you hook things up, the ba uh, BMS is just in shutdown mode and you have to kind of kick it in the butt with the, uh, with the charger. Now this has uh, a high voltage uh, and what you have to do is send it four volts higher than what the battery currently is. So when I got this, it was 95 volts or so. And so I needed to bump it with 99. Now you may be familiar that chargers that high in voltage are kind of rare. You can get them, um, but I did not have one. So, but I did have this, it's a boost converter that easily goes up to hundred volts. So I use that. You'll see more of that in an upcoming video. Um, but I use that with my bench top power supply there and boost popped it so that it turned on and it worked fine. So we're going to take one final look at the BMS software and then we'll call it a video. Uh, out of full um, um, transparency, this battery was supplied to me by batteryhookup.com for this demonstration purpose. Um, if you guys are interested in getting one of these or anything from their site, you can use my discount code tech and that will help out the channel a good bit. So let's look at the BMS software and then we'll call it a video. All right, here's the software. Uh, this is JK's BMS software that you can get from the Google Play Store and I'm sure there's an uh, iOS version. Uh, the BMS shows up here, starts with JK. I'm sure the rest of it is random depending on what model you have. Um, I definitely like this better than the DALI BMS software. Um, but let's take a look at what's on the screen here. We're currently at 94.95 volts. Um, the battery capacity was default of 48 and I changed it to 68, which is what's on the sticker on the side of this thing. Um, and the, you know, um, remaining battery 2%. Currently there's no load on there. It's got three temperature sensors, uh, one for the, uh, actually it only shows one on here. Oh, there it is one and two on the right and left side, and then it has the built-in temperature. Um, and so look at the cell voltages, all very, very close. I don't see very much problems at all there. Even gives you the cell wire resistance. Um, you go into the settings, <clears throat> you got some basic settings, um, cell count, you know, capacity, stuff like that, or the triggering voltage for balancing. Now this BMS also has two amps that it can charge, uh, balance with. That's pretty high. So if you happen to have a, a cell that's kind of lower than the rest, this may be a really good way to keep them <clears throat> in sync and last as long as they possibly can. There's some advanced settings here. We'll get into a little bit of this more in the next video as we get it prepped to use an inverter. So uh, here you can control things. Um, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the password to check settings. The pairing password for Bluetooth is one, two, three, four. But from here, I can disable or enable charging, discharging, or balancing, <clears throat> and some other stuff here. Um, and so that's the software. Um, like I said, we're going to look at this a little bit more in the next video. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And, again, if you want to pick one of these up, look at batteryhookup.com. And, uh, you know, if you want, tell them I sent you. All right, you guys have a good one.